Okay, hello and welcome to a another SolidWorks tutorial. Um, what we're going to do today is just go through some practice tasks, basically. So you should have completed um, SolidWorks The Basics Part 1, uh, which sort of give you an overview of how the tools work. What we're going to do here is just carry on practicing with them, make some more shapes, etc. So uh, what we do is start off with a new part. Um, we're going to use some of the shapes we've used uh, for some of the hand drawing and stuff just so it's familiar. So to start off with, we're going to extrude on our front plane. Uh, we're going to make the 50mm cube to start with. So extruding on this front plane means we need a 50mm square. So we can use a rectangle. Now I'm going to use the centre rectangle because I've said, as I've said before we need to keep our origin point in the middle. So we're going to click on the origin point and draw our rectangle out from there. Now that looks roughly square, um, obviously. So from that, we're going to smart dimension the length. So remember, we can either just click on one side and give that a dimension, or we can click on opposite sides and give that a dimension as well. Okay, so I've smart dimensioned both of those to 50 millimeters. All the lines have turned black. It says fully defined down the bottom, and it's all good. So at that point we end our sketch at the top and here's where we make it 3D so it's on a blind extrusion so we're going to change that to 50 millimeters and we can now see that that looks vaguely cube like um, but as I said before we want to keep our origin point in the middle of our object so we're just going to change it from blind to mid plane so that it keeps the origin and the red arrows in the middle okay so that's our center point so we're just going to tick that. There you go. So now we've got our nice 3D cube. So nice and simple. Now the next thing we're obviously going to do, same as we did uh, when we were drawing, is we're going to make it into a tube rather than a cube. So what we need to do is we need to cut out a section in the middle. So we're going to extrude cut this time. So that's taking material away. We're going to click on one of the faces. So I'm going to click on this face here. Now you can see now that we're drawing on here, it's not spun it around so it's flat, so what we're going to do is up here we've got the view orientation, click on the drop down and you've got normal too. You could always use control 8 which is the shortcut, um, but I struggle to remember the shortcuts so I just use the menus, so normal 2, that spins it around. Okay. So again I need to draw my rectangle, so rectangles again, centre rectangle, click on the origin, pull out. So now we need to dimension it, and as it says on the drawing, it needs a two millimeter wall. So we're going to measure from the edge of the sketch to the edge of the object and make that two millimeters. So we're going to do that. Then going to make the same on the side. Make that two mil as well. There we go. Okay, so it's gone black again, fully defined end our sketch and we can see there that it's blind 50 mil and we know that it's 50 mil so that will cut through obviously if we change it it won't it will just stay as 50 mil cut so the easiest thing we can do because we know the hole we want the hole to go all the way through is to change it to through all and then tick it that way we've got a hole cut through the middle and it will always cut all the way through the middle so there we go so now we have a square tube for us to work with so what I'm going to do now is save that. So it's always important to save your work, otherwise you lose it. So save as um, in my CAD folder. So 50 mil cube was that. So 50 mil is. It's a tube now, isn't it? A tube. There we go. Okay. So that's our first one, nice and simple. So we're going to move on to something a little bit harder now. So we're going to new part again. Now this time, what we're going to do is we're going to work on that uh, L-shaped bracket that we used before, um, a little bit more complicated. So let's have a quick look at that there, here we go. Now, as we remember from last time, um, it's got this sort of L-shape, but it's actually the same all the way along. So this is what we call a uniform cross-section down the length. So what we could do is just draw this shape and then extrude it down the length because it's the same way along. We only have to draw for that shape and it's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do, cut that back out of the way. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude on the front plane again. And what I'm going to do is basically just roughly sketch out that front face. So making sure that I'm making the lines horizontal and vertical all the time. That way they're always blocking up, keeps life simple. You could always do it at an angle, but it makes life difficult. So you have to make sure that that yellow relation pops up. Now you can also see when I'm doing this one that there's a little dotted line that comes down from the first point, and that just helps us line it up to make sure it's all square. There we go. Okay, so there we've got our shape. It's about right. Now we're going to dimension it in. Um, so this bottom edge was 90 millimeters. This back edge was 100 millimeters. Uh, front edge was 50. Uh, from here to the bottom was 20. And then each of the sections was 30 mil. So that's 30. And that's 30. Now I'm not going to, don't need to dimension this one because if I try, because it's already 30, because we know we've got 90 across the bottom, we've got 230, so this one has to be 30. So it'll pop up with everything going yellow saying no, you can't have that. All right. So I know that that is now fully dimensioned, um, but all the lines are still blue. So why is this? So it's underdefined. Now, what you can do is if you've got a blue line, if you wiggle it, it will show you how it's not defined. So if we grab this one and then just drag it up and down, obviously it doesn't move up and down. It moves left and right quite happily. And this one moves up and down. So what you can actually see though is when we're wiggling it, they're all staying the same distance away from each other. So that tells me that we've got the dimensions right and it's all you know, fully dimensioned, but it's not dimensioned to the origin at all. So we don't know where it is, which is why it will quite happily move freely around even though it keeps its shape. So all we need to do is dimension it to the origin. Now as we've done with everything else, we want the origin to be in the middle. So therefore we click on the bottom line and on the origin point and I want that to be 50 mil, so I want it to be half of that length, and I want it to be 45 on the bottom, obviously. So let's click there and there, and then that can be 45. And now, because we've got everything nice and central, it's now come up all black, it's all fully defined, and it works perfectly. At that point, we can then end our sketch at this point, make it 3D, and it's 150 mil in length again. It's all coming out from one direction because it's blind, so I'm going to change it to mid-plane. That way our origin point is still in the middle. There we go. So now we have our nice isometric view here. We all you'll do is click on here and click isometric. So that's our L bracket. Now, if we think about how long that took us to draw by hand for an isometric, but now we've managed to draw it using SolidWorks without too much difficulty, and we've got that right shape, and we can have our nice isometric there. But we could also, as we did with the other drawing, we can look at it from the end, we can look at it from the front. Okay, so it all works quite well. Again, I'm just going to save that one. So save as. Uh, so this one's the L bracket. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move on again. Um, we're going to pick something a little bit harder. So we're going to do that engineer's block that uh, we were playing with last week. So that's this one, um, just so we get a quick reminder about what it looks like. Quite a complicated shape, a lot of stuff there. Now the trick to remember with this one is it doesn't have a uniform cross section. It's not an easy shape. We can't just draw it from one angle, extrude it all the way through, and it'll be right. There's too many different shapes here. Um, whichever way we do it, it's always going to have to have more done. So what I would do actually with this one is start off with a solid block of material the maximum size so the way you think about it is what would you have to start with if you were going to make it in real life so if you're going to make it on a machine or by hand we would start with a block we'd cut out the holes at the back and we cut out the little sections at the front so we're going to make it the same way using SolidWorks it's all about that process so we're going to start off with obviously making a new part and we're going to start off with just extruding um, basically our blank material Center rectangle again, that side. So this bit was 50, and then it's 40 mil tall. Okay. And then when we extrude that, that's going to be 35. Then we go 
can put it in the middle. Okay, so same as we've done with the rest of them. Give it the full size and shape and move it sort of mid-plane. So now we've got our starting block. It's from this that we're going to sort of expand it out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to cut out the channel at the bottom and the channel at the top. So our first thing we're going to do. So this time again, cut. So we're going to cut away some material. Click on the front face. It's not spun round. So let's normal two. This time I am going to use the corner rectangle because I don't need to draw it from the centre. It's all about coming from around here. If you highlight the bottom edge, uh, it comes up with that little yellow box next to your pencil. Uh, that's basically a relation. It's saying that you want to attach it to that edge. So you could draw it here, but it wouldn't be attached. You draw it here, it's attached. So I'm going to, to roughly shape it out. So start dimension. That little channel at the bottom is 30 mil across, 10 mil high, and 10 mil from this edge. And that fully defines it. So there's only the three dimensions, but you know, so you have to tell it how far it is from the edge and how big it is. It's connected at the bottom there, so that justifies it. Okay. Engine sketch. Again, it's only 35 mil across, but I want it to go all the way through, so I'm going to through all and tick. So that's got that little undercut there. And that's the same on the top of the object. This time I'm just going to normal two before I start. I've already highlighted the surface, so I'm going to extrude cut. It doesn't ask me where I want to draw it, it already knows. Now, what I'm going to do here is basically draw the same again, isn't it? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to hidden lines visible. And what this allows us to do is to see that first cut that we've put through. So if we have a quick look at it from a 3D sort of side, there we go. It shows us all the hidden detail lines. So like we were learning to draw the other week, it shows us where the object is and where all the features are. So we can just look at this from the top and go, all right, I want to draw on the top. I know that the hole in the top is the same size as the one on the bottom, so I can hover over the line and I can link it to it, much like we did with the front edge. So I can bring it up to that coincidence there. So I can move it across and there you go, it'll lock onto that one quite happily. But I want it to lock onto this top corner here because I want it connected to the back edge as well. You can see how the line locks on, you've got a little washed up, and we click it. So then you've got relation here and relation here, and it's locked in. And then all we need to do is give it one dimension, because you can see straight away that we've got three black lines already, because it's already mostly defined. So just got to give it a size of 10 mil there, and you can see straight away it's now fully defined, because it's linked to the other features and it's linked to the wall. So we're going to end our sketch, through all again, cut it all the way down yeah. and we can see there it's cut quite happily into it now some people do like to work in this sort of uh, frame mode with the hidden detail visible I don't I think it works um, a, it makes everything a little bit harder I think so I'm just going to switch it back to shaded with edges as this looks more like the real thing would so it gives you sort of that perspective of what, what it should look like yeah. And last thing you want to do obviously is add the little holes in the front. So I'm going to normal to the front again, extrude cuts, taking some more material, and I'll draw in a corner rectangle from that top corner down and then from that corner down. Now they're the same size, aren't they? So I'm just going to let it lick there. Right, so first off, I'm going to do this left hand side one. So I know it's 20 mil tall and it's 20 mil along. And that's fully defined that one. Now I know this one, this rectangle I'm drawing here, is exactly the same as this one. So rather than dimension it, I can click on the line, hold control, and click on the other line, and I'm going to make these equal. Okay? So we've got it in here and we've got it here. So make equal. Now you can see there that those two are both black now because the length of this is predetermined. So what we can then do is do the same with here, so click here, hold control, click here, make those equal as well. And it's fully defined this second one as well, and you can see here it's equal length and equal length. So then if you wanted to, you could always go back and change this one and say, well this actually, this bloke should be 15, I got that wrong. You can see there it changes the other one to match it as well, because they're linked. So 
so it does make life a lot easier when you're doing stuff later on and you complicate things you might be getting them wrong but you can link them together so if you change your mind you can change them both at the same time then we can end our sketch uh, this doesn't go that far in it only goes 15 and then we can see we've got our engineered block again something that was relatively complex to draw by hand we've shown that it's relatively simple really when you're all using CAD software because it's about the process it's about doing things in the right order once you've done that it's very easy so let's save this one as well engineering block uh -huh. now these are just sort of a, a test of your skill really to let help you practice if you want to go back over them again it might be a good idea um, but if you found it relatively easy and you cruised through no problem uh, what i would suggest you do now is start on solidworks basics part two because uh, that will show you a few more commands show you slightly different ones um, and then we'll go on from there uh, thanks for watching